Hey everybody, this is Tracy here with another edition of View from Tracy's Point. And we are here to recap Green Leaf Season 2, Episode 12, which was titled House Rules. <laughs> So the episode opens up with Bishop Skanks with a sermon about homosexuality. Remember, that's going to be his new cause. And it's very clear on his message that we should love gay people. So he uses scriptures to say that no one sin is greater than the other. And he says, you know, if we try to ban everyone who does not follow every biblical law from entering that church, none of us would be sitting right here now. And that is the gospel, because we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So although his congregation um, was with him for most of the sermon, he seems to lose them when he welcomes homosexuals into the church and tell them that, you know, the gay people have just as much right to come to church and worship God as they do. And so you start seeing people like looking at each other like, hmm, and then like, you know, the claps slowly start coming. Then, you know, they kind of pick up, and I'm just like, really, people? <laughs> like, we all know gay people, and we all know they're coming up in church, and most of them are directing our choirs or singing in our choirs. So why do people just continue to act like, like, is this really a, a, a serious issue, or is this just something that, I don't know, like maybe the media is kind of driving that churches don't accept gay people. Like take a few instances and try to make sure like it's the whole body of Christ that's doing this when it's really only a few people. Because if all these black people are gay, they got some black mamas and some black daddies and some black sisters and some black cousins. So those are the same people that sit up in the church every Sunday. So are you really trying to say that churches are not accepting of gay people or is it the pastors that are not accepting of the gay people because they don't know how to deal not necessarily that they don't want to accept gay people but they just don't know how to deal with the issue so in the midst of you know his little sermon he takes a shot at calvary of course alluding to the fact that they are not accepting of the lgbt community and says that it's time to get specific it's time to say god loves gays it's time to take a stand and so in the back of the church, Darius was there taking notes for a story and jogged down um, all the stuff that Basie was saying. So Bishop Greenleaf and Lady May, you know, they're talking about the sermon and reading the interview um, with the paper. I think it was called the Tennessee Statesman's newspaper. And so Lady May and the bishop believe that the sermon and interview are on the front page because Basie who called out the city for a bathroom bill it tried to put into law, you know, is now attacking, the, well, not attacking the church, but calling the church to the carpet. So then Grace comes down for breakfast and, you know, they tell her about the article and then the bishop, you know, asks her if she knew that Darius was working on the article and she says that she did know about it. So then Lady May thinks that Darius interviewed Carlton, who she fired, you know, remember for being openly gay in the church. And so Charity says that, you know, he never said anything to her when she was crying on his shoulder about the other twin passing away. So then Grace says that she'll talk to Darius about the article. Article, you know, and then when she leaves, um, the bishop gives uh, Grace his thoughts on uh, what he thought Basie was really trying to do. So Grace says that, you know, she'll talk to Darius about the article, you know, and see what his, you know, intention is or what the end game is. And so the bishop, you know, lets her know that he, you know, he gives her his thoughts on what Basie is really trying to do. And it has nothing to do with like accepting gay people into the church, but it's just another dig at Calvary. So Grace leaves and after she walks out, you know, Lady May tells the bishop that Basie is working to tear their family apart. And the bishop agrees and says that he should pay skanks a visit. <laughs> so like these people <gasps> operating like the mafia, but when are y'all getting back in the pulpit? So we done seen Basie in the pulpit and we done seen Jacob back there with his street ministry, but when is Calvary getting back in the pulpit? That's what we are concerned about. The bishop goes to see Basie and when he gets there, there's this guy there and he's demanding um, money that Basie owes him. And I think it was like $50,000 or something, but Basie tells him that, you know, he'll have it in two weeks. 
So when Basie notices that um, the bishop is there, you know, he tells the guy he leaves and he'll straighten himself up. So when he leaves, um, the bishop tells him, you know, to never mention Calvary's name again in his sermons or in interviews. And so Basie's like, well, what you going to do? Because then get on that by often. So, so basically, you know, he tells the bishop, you know, he ain't thinking about him. He ain't scared of him, you know. And then the bishop tells basically, you know, oh, and leave my daughter alone. She ain't got nothing to do with this. And so as he's walking down, you know, he tells basically, you know, the judgment is coming. And it's coming for you. I'm like, all right, so now we're putting curses and spirits on people. So Bishop Green leaves, heads back over to Calvary, and he talks to Lady May, you know, about his meeting with Basie. And so Lady May says that she thinks something happened with Basie and Jacob, you know, and the reason that they parted ways and Jacob ended up with that land. And so she, you know, it's going to be her mission to find out what's going on. So then the bishop suggests that um, they go over to Jacob and Carissa's house and try and see if they can get some information out of them. So then we had a scene with Zora. So Isaiah and Zora are in her room studying. <laughs> like, really, Zora? Like, do you really think your parents would be okay with you having this boy in their house? So he tries to start making out with her, but Jacob comes home early. Woo-wee! So Zora hears, you know, Jacob coming in the house and like, oh my God. So then Jacob comes in the room and see Isaiah in there. And so he tells um, Isaiah, little boy, I need you to follow me. So he takes um, Isaiah out of the room and, you know, tells, you know, them like, y'all know the house rules. You know, this boy ain't supposed to be in your bedroom. Like, what is wrong with you, girl? So he has, you know, this little conversation with Isaiah and just pretty much, he didn't jack him up, but he talked to him stern enough for Isaiah to know that he need to tread lightly when it comes to Zora and how disrespectful he's being towards her parents and their house. Then the next time he comes over, think twice about leaving the door open or better yet, coming over here at all because you're not welcome here. So when Isaiah leaves, you know, Jacob, te Jacob tells Zora, you know, that she knows better. And Zora knew she was dead wrong, so there really wasn't much to be said. So then later on, Sophia and Zora are on their way to, um, remember, they're in the little cotillion with the debutante, so they were having a dinner. And Zora, you know, is busy texting Isaiah as usual. So Sophia mentions that they'll have to turn off their phones once they get to the dinner. So Zora tells Sophia that she is texting Isaiah to mend everything with him after um, he was kicked out of the house by Jacob. So late that night, Zora was getting ready for bed and she calls Isaiah. So she tells him that she couldn't text because she was at the dinner and they took their phones and apparently he didn't like that answer because he hung up on her. So why is Zora can't see that this boy got some serious issues? But I guess when you're young and in love, and now she done gave up the Poonani, so he really got her wrapped around his finger. Then we move over to Jacob and Carissa, and they still struggling at this house with these electrical issues and the lights going out and everything. So Jacob impresses himself, you know, after he gets the lights turned back on. So when Carissa asks him how did he do it, he didn't know what he did. He was just happy that the lights came back on so then carissa you know she's thinking about you know they could use the money that they're collecting in the gofundme account to fix up the house and then she begins nagging him about taking the land from basie you know just to hide basie's troubles and he need to tell people what really happened and so jacob you know tells her he's not using the gofundme money and so carissa tells him he needs to get a job and carissa was being very disrespectful on this episode i mean she was telling the truth he do need to get a job but she was just talking to him like he was her teenage son and she was ordering him to get a job or get out the house and i just wasn't understanding that so later, Jacob and Carissa, you know, the, remember the Greenleaf said they was coming to dinner <laughs> trying to figure out what was going on. So they're at dinner. So they get to talking about, you know, the money issues and everything and how Jacob must be struggling trying to get the church up. And so he starts telling him about, you know, some of the jobs that he had when he first started preaching. And so this included selling Bibles, hosting Bible studies and working part time at a funeral home. So the conversation jumps to basically. And Carissa mentions that he may lose the church too. And so, you know, everybody's looking like, wait, what? What are you talking about? So then the bishop brings up the fact, you know, about the guy who was at Basie's office and it didn't look like it was a Christianly meeting that the guy looked like he was jacking Basie up. 
So then Jacob mentions that, you know, he has to keep his word between him and Basie. And so he starts quoting scriptures. And I think he said um, 1 John verses 2 through 5, you know, to validate what he was trying to say, you know, why he can't be telling all of Basie's business. You know, so he's like, whoever keeps his word in him, truly the love of God is protected. So I'm like, okay, when well, people start quoting scriptures to justify why they're not getting ready to gossip, you should respect that. Then Bishop Greenleaf and Lady May, you know, they kind of back off for a second, but then Carissa, you know, she want to press the issue, you know, she want to tell it all, you know, tell them how basically be gambling and then lost all the church money and everything, but uh, Jacob let her know, okay, you are crossing the line, it's none of your business, you know, get you some business <laughs> and stay out of this. So when they're walking to the door, you know, Carissa kind of like holds the bishop back and then she wants to tell him about the electrical issues and Jacob was like, stop. Like, didn't I tell you that is our business? We're going to figure that out. That's not for you to be telling them. And so Carissa's like, well, you know, a woman attempts to take care of home. She raises her children in. And so I'm just like, okay, girl, you just get beside yourself. So this starts an argument between them, you know, after the parents leave. And so, you know, he's trying to, you know, like get Carissa to know that, you know, I'm trying to be the man that you said you wanted me to be. And, you know, when I was out there dipping and dabbing and sleeping with the um, little white girl, Alexa, that we ain't heard from, you know, this season. Because <laughs> I guess she got fired, you know, once Jacob came on board. And then, because wasn't she supposed to be suing Calvary? Like, what happened to any of that? But anyway, you know, Jacob was basically saying, you know, the way you're acting now is the way you were acting when I was out there sleeping around and not doing what I was supposed to do. Couldn't get my daddy to promote me to co-pastor at the church. And now that I have this opportunity and I'm trying to build this ministry, you still got the same nasty, stank attitude. So then Carissa was looking at him like, really, like she was, in, you know, feeling indignant that he was talking to her in this way. And so then Jacob told her that instead of um, trying to take his authority away as the man of the house, she needed to be paying some attention to her children because Zora is totally out of control at this point. So the following day, Miss Carissa took it upon herself to hobble her little butt over there to Calvary. And so she meets with Bishop um, Greenleaf and Lady May and tells them how she and Jacob got the land. And she also tells them, you know, that Basie is all in debt because of his gambling issues. And then she also says that he owes $250 that he stole from the church to pay off these people or to gamble with these people. So Lady May and the Bishop, you know, they promised not to tell Jacob that she spilled the beans, but both are thrilled to finally hear that they have something that they can finally use against Basie to get him out of their lives. So we move over to Grace and she's decided to take over Kevin's position as the Director of Outreach Ministry because she's decided that she's never going to preach again and she ain't, you know, spiritually attuned to being a preacher again and so she has all Kevin's files brought over to her office so as she's going through everything she comes across um this flyer about the families of fortitudes and so she decides to go to the bishop you know to tell him that she thinks that this is what Kevin was doing and that you know Calvary needs to be more open and welcoming towards the gay community and she feels that Basie was right then the bishop you know tells her that his fight you know isn't ready then the bishop tells her that this is a fight that he isn't ready to take on so Grace you know she isn't accepting of his answer you know to be patient and she feels that they need to open their doors to the gay community they need to be in the community showing Christian love and so like I said last episode, you know, now that she done killed off Uncle Mike and the whole sexual molestation in the church has been resolved <laughs> with his death, now she's ready to move on to some other issue that's going to, you know, tear the family apart and keep the church in upheaval. And I guess that's her plight in life. So then we had a scene where Lady May and the bishop were talking when he gets a call from Rochelle. And so he takes the call, you know, Lady May decides it's time for her to go and talk to Jacinta again. <laughs> so not about the dog old Cotillion, but about Miss Rochelle. Lady May meets with Jacinta and she brings up Rochelle, you know, the way that she does to get the information that she needs. And so Jacinta mentions um, that 
that Rochelle, you know, has been handling her finances for years. And so Lady May tells Jacinta that Rochelle is looking for a new church home and says um, she didn't have a good experience over at the church Greater Redeemer where she used to be a member. So Jacinta is looking at Lady May like, oh, she told you about her experience over there. So Lady May was like, yeah, it was just awful. So then Jacinta spilled the beans and says that Rochelle had an affair with somebody at the church and that um, she then, you know, tells Lady May, you know, not to tell Rochelle that she knows, you know, about what happened and Lady May agrees. So then we go over to Bishop Greenleaf's office and Rochelle is there. And so he's telling her all about Basie's sermon about accepting um, the gay community into the church. And so, you know, she agrees with him that Basie's going too far and, you know, that's not, you know, something he should be trying to take on. And so Rochelle tells uh, Bishop, Greenleaf that she has decided that she's going to join Calvary. <laughs> so, Lady May, we know you own it, girl, but I'm just saying, make sure you own it, own it, own it. So then we move on to Charity. So Jabari is back in town and he stops by Calvary to see her. And so he needs help laying down a demo for a gospel singer. And he brings in this equipment that Charity can use to record demos. So now Charity's really in her feelings because remember she kissed the man on the last episode. So she feels that he's bringing her this equipment because he doesn't want her to come to Nashville anymore. And so now she's kind of like questioning like, what's up with my radar? Like, why does he not want me? When she asks, you know, Jabari, like, do you not want me to come to Nashville anymore? You know, he tells her, oh, no, that's not the case. I just think it'll be easier, you know, for you to get the tracks down. And then you got your baby that you got to be worried about and everything. And so I think he asked her, yeah, that was when he asked her, you know, did she want to grab something to eat as he was walking out? But it wasn't like, would you like to go to dinner with me? It was like, oh, why don't we go grab some dinner? You know, like what friends would do. So now she got her hopes back up. So she goes to see Grace at the event with Grace and you know, like, what am I doing wrong? Why doesn't he find me desirable? You know, all that stuff. So then she asks Grace if she will babysit. And then Grace says, of course I'll babysit for you. Like, I got a date tonight at 6.30 with Darius. But, you know, that ain't important. You go on to dinner with Jabari and I'll deal with Darius and let him down once again. So then Darius stops by Grace's office to pick her up for their date. I guess she forgot to call and tell him that they weren't going on the date. And so she tells him, you know, that she um, has to babysit Nathan for charity instead. And so Darius seems cool and he goes along with it. But I know he got sick of Grace. Grace and Darius, you know, they're over at the Greenleaf Mansion and he's, you know, brought in some takeout. And so she asks him about the story and then, you know, reminds him, you know, about the pact that they have about writing stories about the church and so you can tell that this kind of upset Darius and he's really sick of Grace so he told her you know maybe we should stop seeing each other you know he said you know whenever we find reasons to be more than study partners you find a reason to pull away so why don't we just stop the foolishness right now so then Grace brings up the offer you know in New York that he had and the fact that he never told her why he doesn't go to church and then Darius, you know, was like, he don't want to talk about it. So he left. And I was like, okay, that was kind of confusing. But anyway, so Charity and Jabari, they go to dinner and they have a little nice time. So Charity goes to drop him back off at his hotel and they're sitting in the car talking. And so it was a bit of an awkward moment for them. So when he says goodbye, he kisses, he kisses Charity on the cheek. And so we all know when a man kiss you on the cheek that you have just been relegated to the friend zone. So that charity, you know, she real pissed off at this point. So when she gets back home, you know, she asks uh, Grace about the baby and Grace tells you know, the baby was good. And so then she tells um, Grace in not so many words that she thinks um, Jabari may be gay. I think she said, you know, what's wrong with my radar? Why is my radar off? And so then Grace was telling her, you know, I don't think the man is gay. <laughs> Like, don't go that far, you know, give him some time. So then later on, um, Darius calls and tells her, you know, tells Grace that he's sitting outside. And so she goes outside to talk to him. And then he tells her that the reason that he doesn't go to church is because he used to be married. And that his, um, his wife died, I think, in a car accident. And when he went to talk to the pastor about it, you know, the pastor gave him that same spiel about, you know, judging, you know, 
questioning God and everything has a reason and a purpose and all that, you know, things that you don't want to hear when you're really seeking understanding as to why something just happened to you and they be coming up with all these little cliches that be saying that does nothing but piss you off further and move you further away from the church. And then I would be remiss if I didn't point out the fact that <laughs> on um, Being Mary Jane, I think the same week, being Mary Jane, we learned that um, Mary Jane's boyfriend, Justin, that his ex-girlfriend, the one that he said that, you know, he loved so much and had never, you know, she was the only woman that he'd ever loved, we find out that she actually died of cancer. So once again, these parallels in the writing of these stories. And one other thing that I'm starting to notice is that when I'm making these comparisons, it's usually the same show. So I think Greenleaf and Being Mary Jane must have some of the same writers or same, some of the same production people. And that's why they have these parallels in their writings. And um, it was another one that I had figured out. It was Power, Power and Queen Sugar. Was that the one that I said? But it's like I'm starting to see a pairing of which shows may have the same people working on on the shows that are like, because um, remember I was saying Funky, Funky Deneva had pointed out that sometimes these people work on the same shows because they're like contract writers and editors and that type of thing. And that's why we may be seeing um, some of the similar storylines. Well, after, you know, he shares that story with her, you know, Grace asks him, you know, so will I see you again? And he tells her, you know, that it's pretty much up to her. And then Grace says, oh, well, I, you know, God, I hope so. So maybe she going to come around and really act like a girlfriend and she really wants to build a relationship with them. So then they share a little cute kiss and Derry says that he will make sure, you know, that she sees him again. So another good episode. Um, not really that much going on again, but it was a good episode. <laughs> so you guys let me know what you think. Um, is Grace and Darius ever going to work things out? And what are your feelings about the whole issue about gay people in the black church do you really think it's an issue and that the black congregation is not accepting of gay people or do you think it's just that the pastors don't know how to handle the situation without condoning you know so if the pastor thinks that being gay is a sin but you're supposed to love everybody is it that they haven't figured out how to how to accept the person and not you know condone or promote the lifestyle so let me know what you think in the comments below rate the video um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and if you like the video please share it on your social media platforms and until the next time i shall talk to you guys later bye bye